The information I'm about to share in this video is certainly not rocket science. It's pretty straightforward, easy to understand, and relatively simple. I'm going to show you how I put together a pedal generator out of some basic bicycle parts and an alternator from a wind turbine. Before I get to that though, I have some interesting announcements. First, I'd like to show you where you can see a new edit of my most educational video series I've created on this channel. The three types of magnetic motors. The URL is listed above. I've had complaints in the past about the sound effects being too loud or the music being too repetitive, so I remastered the series and combined the three videos into one. This other video channel will also serve as a backup channel, so if my videos ever disappear off this platform, look for them over there. Secondly, if you haven't already checked it out, take a look at my other YouTube channel, IT List. This is where I create videos on other subjects that wouldn't fit into the theme of alternative energy. I just uploaded a new one on the possibility of an economic collapse that could happen sooner than you think. There's a link in the description below. For my most controversial videos that I could never share on this platform, visit me on Rumble at the URL above. Lastly, with everything going on in the world today, it never hurts to prepare for a crisis. You never know when there could be another lockdown or a financial crisis. Food shortages are a real possibility today. So I would highly recommend you get yourself some storable food. My favorite source of which is My Patriot Foods. They have a large selection of foods which can be stored up to 25 years. I like to hope for the best but plan for the worst. It's a lot easier to stay motivated when you don't have to be stressed by a crisis because you've already prepared for it. And if the crisis never comes, you still have yourself some great meals you can eat anytime you like. Click the link in the description below and have a look for yourself. I like to think of it as inexpensive peace of mind. Now back to the pedal generator. There are multiple versions of bicycle generators that you can find online that people have put together quite easily. In fact, if you want to keep it as basic as possible, you only need to chop a portion of an old bike or use an exercise conversion kit for your own bike. Add an alternator and presto, you have a bike or pedal generator. Of course, I rarely do things the easy way, so in this video, I'll be showing the progression of a pedal generator I've been working on. I started to build one of these back in November of 2017 and got sidetracked with other projects before finishing it. The way things are going in the world today, I decided it might be a good time to revisit the idea. The ability to generate your own power in an emergency without relying on the availability of gasoline for a generator seems like a good idea to me. I thought of it after they experienced a hurricane in New York City a few years back. People were filling gas cans to power their gas generators, but the gas stations quickly began running out, with the supply chain temporarily compromised. What most people do when they build one of these is use a motor as a generator or an alternator from an automobile. It was my initial thought to do so as well, but if you look at what I started with, this motor was rated 48 volts at 3000 RPM, and that could give you about 1000 watts of power. So to reach full power, if you use the motor as a generator, you'd need to reach 3000 rotations a minute. Not impossible to do by pedaling, but not exactly easy either. You'd need to go through several conversions through cogs to pull that off, with each one increasing the drag and the amount of effort it would require. One turn of the second gear will turn the rotor two times. As you add more gears, the rotor will double in speed for every gear added as the gear ratio becomes 1 to 4, then 1 to 8, and so on. A fast rotor yields more electricity, but it also comes as a cost. We can't just keep adding gears because the more we add, the more power is required for them to turn. With each gear doubling the gear ratio, that quickly adds up, and soon we won't be able to turn the gears at all. 2 volts, 2.1, and at 305 RPM. Now we're at 5 volts. Six volts. So that's 800 RPM. And we have 1750 RPM, that's at 13 volts. There's uh, 
3,612. That's 28 volts right there. As you see, it can get pretty ridiculous once you look at the numbers. So the simplest way around this would be to use an alternator designed to produce more power at lower RPMs. Wind alternators are designed to do just that. So I picked this one up. According to the specs, it can reach full power of 48 volts and 2500 watts at 420 RPM. That's around one-seventh the RPMs necessary in the motor I had with two and a half times the watts. I tested the first setup and found I could reach around 420 RPM on the alternator by pedaling around 60 rotations a minute. Just for good measure, I added this 50 tooth cassette sprocket and was able to increase the RPMs to just over 700 with minimal effort. It's a bit of overkill, but I figured if I add a more powerful alternator later, I'll be able to reach higher RPMs if necessary. While you can power a few devices or charge your peripherals directly by pedaling an alternator, I believe that if that's all you do with it, you're missing the point. When you use the wind or solar power, you're usually storing the power you generate into a battery system. It's really just a sophisticated battery charger. You should think of a pedal generator in the same way. The purpose should be to charge your batteries as quickly as possible so that you could power certain things you may need to keep going during an emergency. Like an efficiency freezer, medical equipment, a heater, things like that. Wind generators rarely produce anywhere near what they are rated for at peak efficiency as you can't count on consistent wind speeds high enough to reach their peak. However, you can reach peak efficiency quite easily pedaling them at a comfortable speed. So what I've assembled here could be used to charge a couple of deep cycle lithium batteries that could power some small devices temporarily. Or you can up the ante and use a 12,000 watt wind alternator to charge added batteries more quickly. Or hook two alternators together to double the output. It all depends on what your energy needs are and how much you need to upscale your power output. I've seen some very affordable wind alternators for sale on Amazon. These ones are manufactured in China, and I have no idea of the quality as they don't appear to have any reviews. If anyone out there knows of a high quality alternator for a wind turbine that produces over 10,000 watts of power and is reasonably affordable, feel free to drop the info in the comments section. What I put together for this video is really just the first stage. I wanted to see if I could easily harness the full capacity of the alternator using a simple pedal mechanism and which parts I needed to include in order to do so. The next step is to improve the design by using more solid parts, and then to add a charge controller, deep cycle lithium batteries, and an inverter. At that point, I'll have a portable power station that can be used for backup or emergency power. These are the charge controller batteries and inverter I'm planning to add next. Though if I were to really build one of these in a more efficient and powerful way, I'd add more powerful stackable batteries and an inverter charge controller combo that could handle a much more powerful load. First things first though, better not to get ahead of yourself as it's more prudent to learn to walk before you try to run. And simply assembling different versions of this generator has taught me a lot. For example, I'd suggest you don't build one of these out of wood and aluminum parts, as even the thick wood I used for the base is bowed from handling the stress of pedaling the alternator. Better to use steel parts, or like I said in the beginning of the video, chop up part of a used bike or add an exercise conversion kit to a bike so you're dealing with a sturdy frame. This version of a pedal generator is a good example of how to build one that's more durable. It was financed by a billionaire who created an energy drink. It's probably the best version I've seen and employs some practical things like a flywheel. The flywheel keeps things running more smoothly as well as keeping some energy input going into your system for a few minutes even after you stop pedaling. I'd probably add one in the middle of my assembly if I were to add one, as it would require less RPMs and might keep the system a bit safer to be around. You can even build a flywheel fairly easily by adding weights to a bicycle wheel. This YouTuber built one out of cement he formed around a bike wheel.
I'll probably adapt this design into a more solid version, and I might add a more powerful alternator. But this is the most recent version I put together, and I felt it was time to share my progress. One thing I was particularly pleased with was the fact that even though the alternator I'm currently using is rated for 48 volts, you may have noticed that when I hooked up a voltmeter to it earlier, I was able to reach 62 volts quite easily. So that means I'll have to hold back when pedaling. I'd rather have to slow it down and apply less effort rather than to have to push it to reach the full capacity of the alternator. So I consider that a win. Thanks for watching and do great things.